Okay, family, if you're prepping for a systems administrator interview, you already know it ain't about just knowing a few commands or configure. Sir, the system administrator role is about keeping IT environments up and running and secure. Interviewers want to see if you got the skills, the mindset, and the troubleshooting chops to handle everything that gets thrown at you in this role. So today, I got 10 solid sysadmin interview questions, plus how you should be thinking about the answer when you're answering these questions. Right before we jump in, if you like this kind of content, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section below about IT interview questions you might have gotten in sysadmin interviews, and let's start a conversation about how the best answer these questions for folks who are trying to level up from maybe a help desk to a sysadmin. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Question number one, walk me through how you would troubleshoot a slow server. Now this is pretty much a classic sysadmin question. They want to know if you can approach a problem logically instead of randomly throwing ideas or solutions at it, right? Things that they're going to be looking for in your answer is, do you check system resources first, like CPU, memory, disk usage? Are you looking at logs for errors as opposed to just randomly clicking around? Are you considering external factors like network congestion or application performance? Can you prioritize which path you are going to start with when you're trying to troubleshoot the problem? Now, Here's an idea of how I might respond to a question like this. I'd start by checking resource utilization with tools like Top or Task Manager to see if a process is eating up a lot of CPU or memory. Then I might go and check disk usage, input output performance, because a full or failing disk can slow everything down. If that checks out, I move on to logs, journal CTL, D message or event logs to see if there are system error. If everything looks normal there, I might investigate network latency, packet loss, and external dependencies. Things like that can slow down the server. And so you might want to look there. Now, some of these are going to be, you know, more advanced troubleshooting tips for very entry level people. They're just going to start with the basics. You can start with just checking task manager for any anomalies, very high disk usage, very high CPU usage, things like that. Question number two, how do you manage user permissions in a Linux or Windows environment? So if you uh, don't have any Linux experience, then you would just answer this question for the win Windows side. But really, user management is kind of uh, the main system admin task and they want to see if you understand how much you understand about access control. So what they're going to be looking for in a question like this is, do you understand the principle of least privilege? Can you explain CH mod for Linux machines, CH iron groups, active directory for Windows machines, permissions, things like this? Can you troubleshoot permissions issues, right? So how I might respond to a question like this is in a Linux machine, I'd use the LS minus L to check the file permissions and maybe the git FACL for more detailed access control. I'd identify permissions with the CH mod, the CH on and ensure users are in the right groups. Now on Windows machines, I'd manage permissions via Active Directory or group policy. Ensuring role-based access is enforced. If a user can't access something, I check their group membership, inherited permissions, and maybe some audit logs. You can find out more about how to do these checks by, um, you know, just going and learning some uh, Windows system management, Lin Linux system management. You can go on sites like Udemy and search up courses. YouTube is a great resource for finding user administration demonstrations like you know videos on how to set permissions and manage users in both environments linux and windows search around for some resources to get more familiar with this uh type of task question number three a critical system goes down at 2 a.m what do you do 
this question tests how you handle high pressure situations at prioritized incident response. What they're going to be looking for is can you stay calm under pressure? Do you follow incident response best practices? How do you communicate with stakeholders? The way I would respond to a question like this is first verify the issue, check the monitoring alerts or logs to confirm what's actually going down. Next, then access the impact. Is this affecting one service, one server, multiple servers, multiple services? That way you can determine how severe or how critical uh, the issue is. If there's a quick fix like restarting a service or restarting a machine, rolling back a recent change, start there, handle it immediately. If not, you can escalate it to on-call teams, document everything, and uh, notify stakeholders with clear and concise updates. The key to this type of issue is fast triage and uh, robust communication while working toward a record. Question number four. Explain the difference between a full backup an incremental backup and a differential backup. So backups are key and you will need to know how the different types work in, in most environments, especially if you are handling data retention backup scenarios, uh, disaster recovery scenarios, right? The things that they're going to be looking for is do you understand backup strategies? Can you explain when to use which type of backup strategy? Different things like that. How I would respond to a question like this is a full backup copies everything. They consist of the largest file sizes. They take up the most space in storage, but they are the easiest to restore. An incremental backup only saves changes since the last backup. That makes it faster, but it requires multiple files to restore. A differential backup saves changes since the last full backup making restores simpler than incrementals, but taking up more space over time. For a faster recovery strategy, I schedule a full backup weekly and an incremental backup daily. Question number five, what's the difference between TCP and UDP and which one would you use for each use case, right? So networking knowledge is crucial for system admins and they want to see if you understand protocol. The way I would respond to a question like this is TCP transmission control protocol is connection based. That means it ensures all packets arrive in order and intact. This is good for web browsing, file transfers, things like this. UDP user datagram protocol is connection less. So it's faster, but it doesn't guarantee delivery. And so the ideal use case for this is real-time applications like voice over IP, gaming, and video stream. If a sysadmin is troubleshooting network issues, knowing the protocol in use helps determine if the packet loss or latency is the problem. Question number six, how would you secure a web server? So sysadmins, they play a significant role in security. This question tests if you are proactive in your sysadmin role. And how I would respond to a question like this is I'd start with the basic idea of keeping the OS and software updated, right? Disable unnecessary services and enforce strong access control. Configure firewalls, allow only necessary traffic. I'd secure the web server itself, force HTTPS on the server. That's a secure hypertext protocol. Use secure headers and limit file permissions. Finally, I'd set up some type of monitoring with various tools depending on the operating system that I'm working on. You want to protect against as many types of attacks as you can. Also, you want to centralize logs for real-time uh, review and alert. Question number seven. Can you explain what happens when you type a URL into a web browser? This is a fairly common question. It's testing your understanding of networking, DNS, and web protocol. The way I would respond to a question like this is, when you enter the uh, web address or the URL in the browser, it checks a DNS cache or queries a DNS server to resolve the domain name to an IP address, the language that computers speak. Um, it then establishes a TCP connection via a three-way handshake 
The browser sends the HTTP request to the web server. It processes it, processes the request and responds with an HTML page. That response is rendered by the browser. It pulls in additional information and assets like images and scripts as it needs to display based on whatever the request it receives it. Question number eight, what is the difference between virtualization and containerized? This is gonna be a, a big question in the modern IT um, systems and system admin roles and responsibilities as much more of this stuff moves to cloud and microservices. System admins are expected to know about uh, virtual machines and containers. So the way I would respond to a question like this is virtualization runs multiple operating system instances on a hypervisor layer like VMware or Hyper-V, while containers shares the host operating system but isolates applications using uh, services like Docker or Kubernetes. VMs are heavier than containers with full OS as part of their overhead, whereas containers are more lightweight, making them ideal for microservices and CICD pipelines. Question number nine, how would you diagnose high CPU usage on a Linux server? So troubleshooting is a core system admin skill, and they want to see if you know how to isolate performance issues. So the way I would respond to a question like this is start at the top with top or H top, check processes, see what's consuming CPU. If a specific service is maxing out CPU usage, investigate the logs to see if it's an expected workload or if it's a runaway process or something like that. If it's system-wide, check the kernel logs to rule out hardware issues. If needed, you can throttle or restart processes. You can optimize resource allocation or investigate potential malware and hardware or device. Question number 10. What is your experience with automation and scripting? So again, this is a modern thing. Modern system admins need to know about automation. Uh, questions like this check if you can work smarter, not harder, basically. And so how I would respond to a question like this is use scripting to automate repetitive tasks. You can, in Bash, you can write scripts to automate log rotations and user account provisioning. In PowerShell, uh, you can write scripts like Active Directory cleanup tasks. You can use resources like Ansible for Esper structure automation. You can do patching and software deployment. Automation reduces human error and it saves a lot of time for you know repetitive tasks for system admins. It, it's a must have skill for any system ad administrator because it takes away the tedious day-to-day mundane tasks and frees you up for more time for innovation, right? So if you're prepping for a sysadmin role, these questions cover technical knowledge, troubleshooting, and problem solving. Those are the things you need to ace that interview. And the biggest tip is don't just memorize answers, understand the concepts, and be ready to explain your thought process when you're answering these questions. So do me a favor, let me know in the comments which of these questions you run into before, if you got any wild interview stories of your own, and if you want more IT career tips, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share these videos to other folks who are interested in the tech space, who are transitioning into tech from other careers. Some of this uh, information might be very helpful to them on their journey. And that's gonna be it. For today, Tech Fam, stay learning, stay building, stay growing, and until the next video, peace.